Hey, it's Jay. Welcome back to the channel. So I recently moved and I've been so busy unpacking that I haven't had a ton of time to get out and do much shooting or vlogging. So you haven't seen too many videos from me lately. Um, but today I figured I'd stay inside and do a Photoshop tutorial how I process a fine art architectural image. Uh, and if you like these videos, remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. Uh, let me first apologize for the hat. Uh, you've seen it in the last number of videos, and that's because I haven't gotten a haircut in a long time. So just to give you a sense how long my hair is, it comes way down to my nose. Actually can do a little uh, a flock of seagulls action for those of a certain age that remember that band. But I'll keep the hat on. You don't have to look at my mess of a hair and I can actually see. So let's jump into my computer, it's right across my office, and we'll get into Photoshop. Okay, welcome to my computer. Uh, what I want to do today is show you how I turn this image into this image. Now I've already done some work in Lightroom. I converted to black and white. I uh, added a little bit of clarity and contrast, but really not too much. In addition to save time, I've already made a number of selections in the image, the sky and different parts of the building. I do get questions on making selections. With this kind of image, it's relatively straightforward. I just use a polygonal lasso tool, just to give you a sense. If I, I would zoom in quite a bit, and you hit on a Mac, Command Plus to do that, I'd find a corner to start with. Uh, let's say this area here. Uh, and to drag, by the way, I just hit the space bar and drag. To beat the space bar, you can move around the image. Easy shortcut. But I would zoom in really quite a bit. And with the polygonal lasso tool, I would start to make my selection by clicking around the image, uh, dragging, staying right on the line that I want to select. Just to give you a sense. I would probably go out this way, up. I'm going to go quickly now. In fact, I can make it a little bit bigger just to give you a sense. Uh, click down here, there, and all the way over to there. And so, bam, I have my selection. And again, I've done that with a number of parts of the building and the sky already. So let's start with the sky. I mean, to save those selections, by the way, you make the selection, go up to select, and hit save selection. It's grayed out now because I don't have a selection, but that's what you would do. To load the selection, you go up to load selection. And so uh, the, for sky, I called it sky. And like many of my architectural images, I do want to darken this sky quite a bit, and that allows the building to pop a bit more. Uh, so I'm going to use an adjustment layer. For the sky, I'm actually going to use an exposure adjustment layer. Everything else, I'm using curves adjustment layers. But for the sky, I'll use an exposure adjustment layer. And I'm just going to drag down. I don't want it all the way black, but I want it uh, you know, a little bit of gray, kind of a deep, deep gray, something like that, possibly. So here's the before, here's the after. You can see that building already begins to stand out more. Now, for the building itself, um, the light really was coming from the left. So I want to keep that in mind. In addition, what I want to do is create maybe some separation of these different panels to make them stand out more. And you'll see how I do that. It's relatively straightforward. I'm going to start with one of these panels on the left. Number two, I call it. You'll see the selection pop up. Since the light is coming from that, that side, uh, that panel would generally be brighter. You can see it is a little bit brighter, but I want to emphasize that more. So I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up on that layer. Uh, to create a little bit of interest in these layers too, I will use a modest gradient. And so I can reselect it choose my gradient tool, make sure I have my linear gradient tool selected. I want my foreground to be white, which means this layer will show through. And then I can pull in from the left, you get that modest gradient, which I think adds something to it. Um, the next section will be the next one over. Now this one is a little bit more in shade, 
and again I want to emphasize that by darkening it and so I can choose curves adjustment layer drag down to darken it I don't want to go all the way and make it black I want some detail there but I want it darker and I'm just going to continue with uh, the image that way and so if I choose the next one again this part will be a little bit brighter I'll choose a curves adjustment layer pull up to uh, to make it brighter I can reselect uh, I got my gradient tool selected I'm going to pull in from the right just to add that modest gradient but you can see the um, the nice separation between these panels and it really does highlight the architecture very nicely and so I'm moving on I can hit the I think it was up to five I think yeah so this this is what again would be a little bit more in the shade I'm gonna darken this pull down you see you really see the uh, the panels of this building really standing out now and the angles very much standing out and so if I go to the next one this one it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a little bit more sun so I'm going to brighten it up let me choose a curves adjustment layer and pull up I can reselect choose the gradient tool which is already selected pull in from the right and you get that gradient and that last panel uh, is not going to be in the shade this one way over to the right will be um, hit, getting hit by the sun and so I want to choose a curves adjustment layer and pull up and maybe add a little gradient there as well so I can reselect get my gradient tool pull in from the right just a little bit of gradient um, and so just to give you a sense for the building this was the before fairly flat this is the after it really does accentuate uh, the angles of the building these different panels you know I do like from the bottom of the image I do like this uh, strip that runs along the bottom of it and so I want to um, highlight that a little bit more too I called it strip and that's pretty easy I'm just gonna pull up on a curves adjustment layer to brighten it up really defines the uh, that under roof area a bit and there's also this uh, this triangular piece of window on the lower part of the image. I want to brighten that up as well and maybe add a, um, a gradient. And so I will choose a curves adjustment layer, pull up, brightening it quite a bit. I can uh, reselect. Got my gradient tool selected. Uh, I'm going to pull in from the left and uh, again it adds a bit more interest to it uh, the last last two things I want to do is I want to first with the under part of the roof here uh, I want to add uh, almost like a reflection of light in there from the left side and so first thing I need to do is load this selection I called it under roof um, I want to darken it a bit and so I'm just going to pull down so then I want to reselect this part of the building and let's choose under roof and I'm going to brighten up just a piece of it and so I can use a curves adjustment layer brighten up the entire selection reselect it uh, this time instead of using my linear gradient tool I'll use my radial gradient tool and I can pull out from a particular area so just that area will then show the brightness and then I can deselect by hitting command D okay so the last thing I want to do is to add some drama to the sky uh, ideally I would have been there that day with my tripod and some fast moving clouds and I would have captured some streaking clouds in the sky it would have been really cool I didn't have my tripod that day so I, it was not an option for me but there's always the option in Photoshop um, so let's let's do that first thing I want to do is to essentially create a copy of all the layers I've worked on so I can highlight those layers by hitting the shift key uh, starting with the top layer hitting 
the bottom layer, and that highlights all those layers. And then if you hit Shift Option Command E on a Mac, what happens is it takes all those layers and makes a copy of it. You can see this layer uh, right here. Now I can do stuff to this layer where it won't be impacted by some of the layers below. And so first thing I'm going to do is to select the sky. Um, I'm going to put this on a new layer. So this icon down here is for creating a new layer, which I'm going to do. I'm going to keep that sky selected and go to Filter, um, Render, Clouds. And you'll see a really a bunch of clouds in the sky, very fake looking. Uh, let's put a mask on it by hitting this icon here. Uh, let's choose our black brush. So I'm going to make the foreground black, choose a brush, and this way I can erase some of these clouds. And so I'm thinking uh, a cloud pattern, streaking clouds, that will come out from the middle. And so I'm going to take a little bit away from the building. And I want to make a much smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And again, I'm thinking the clouds are coming out from the middle. And so I can do this, make a little bit bigger brush here, just to give you a sense. Now we need to add a blur to it. And so again, with this, uh, with the actual layer selected, I go to Filter, Blur, uh, I'm going to choose Radial Blur, and you want to choose uh, Zoom. Now this you can position where you want the, rate, the uh, zoom to start from. And it's not really in the middle of the image, it looks like it's more towards the top of the image. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that blur. We should probably make it even blurrier by going to Filter, and the last thing you did usually shows up on top and I'll hit radial blur again and you can see how it's coming out from, I'll do it one more time, coming out from the middle. Pretty cool. Now you can always adjust it, uh, taking out some of this uh, on the side over here by using your brush on the mask. Um, I probably want to uh, reduce the opacity of this layer just a little bit, it looks a little bit too dramatic and so I can bring down the opacity and I guess lastly always a good thing to do is to um, add a curves adjustment layer to the whole image just to add a little bit more contrast so you can always pull down on the left side to darken the shadows pull up on the right to brighten up the highlights um, and there you go uh, that's the final image I uh, say if you like uh, this video, if you want to see more of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, and until next time.